Hi, I'm Wayne Huang, co-founder to Amorize, and this is our video report of the K985YTV.HTML mass injection incident. The utility is very simple. It will monitor the C drive for the creation of any .exe files, and if found, it will copy them to the file bucket directory. So I will open the file bucket directory here. As you can see, the file path matches and therefore, when the utility finds the creation of any new .exe files, it will be copying them to the directory here. The utility also does an MD5 on files and also monitors the creation of new processes. The reason to auto-copy the files is it makes it easier for us to analyze the samples because many downloaders tend to delete themselves or move around after execution. I then start Fiddler which will show me all of the HTTP traffic when loading a victim website. And finally, I will start my Internet Explorer. And as you can see in the Elmerize monitor, it's showing me that two processes have been started. And now we're ready to navigate to one of the infected websites this time. Um, and we'll be using www.trainage.com as an example. On the top of the page, you can see a block of injected script. This was left over from the attacker's very first attempt. Uh, the block of injected script was not successful, and that is why it's been rendered rather than executed. Down there in the Omrise monitor, you can see that Adobe Acrobat Reader has been started, and this is because while navigating to this infected page, my browser has hit a PDF exploit. And boom, my browser is closed, and as you can see, a lot of files are being created and processes are being run, and samples are being collected into the file bucket directory. Here's what happened. I started Fiddler, I started an Explorer, I navigated to the infected page, I hit a PDF exploit, that is why Adobe Acrobat Reader is being run, and then a file is created and run, and another file is created and run. But if we look at the MD5s, these are actually the same files, and that is why only the first one is marked as new. So we can assume that there was a PDF exploit and then another exploit, and both were successful, but both dropped the exact same files and ran the exact same files. And then the malware created a whole bunch of same EXE files that's never run. So there's only a total of two new files, number 8 and number 4. And Number eight's been copied here, and number four is also being copied here. And we're done. We've collected both samples, so we'll close the Omrise monitor, and we'll open up our Dropbox account, copy one of the binaries here because we like to submit it to VirusTotal in another virtual machine later. Now let's look at the HTTP traffic this is the first HTTP response. You can see here is the uh, failed injection. There's no script tag, and that is why uh, the injection is being rendered or displayed rather than executed. Let's copy the string, also put it in our Dropbox, so later we can Google and see how many of these uh, infected websites Google has picked up. So we'll save it as injection.txt. And we'll paste the string here. Save it. Close. And we go back to the HTTP response. Scroll down. You can see at the bottom of the page, here is the later successful injection. Notice the existence of the script tag, and that's why this time the script's being executed and not rendered. When executed inside the browser, the script generates an iframe pointing to this URL, and notice the file name k985ytv.htm is how we've chosen to name this particular attack because they've used this name repeatedly uh, for a lot of their later attacks. The URL has a very simple HTTP redirect to the exploit domain, uh, which is here. And here we see the first JavaScript exploit. Uh, it's an exploit. At the same time, it also generates 
another iframe uh, pointing to a PDF exploit, which is shown here. And apparently, this PDF exploit was loaded by my browser, and in this case, was successful first in ex exploitation, and therefore, it caused my browser to download this malicious binary to disk, and this is the last uh, HTTP traffic there is. You can see down there, uh, the fake antivirus is starting. So we'll wait for the fake antivirus malware to execute. It's pretty slow. And as you can see, the icon here, this piece of malware has permanently installed itself inside this computer already. Okay, what a slow piece of fake antivirus. So you can see that under Windows XP, it's calling itself XP Security 2012, and let's switch to our Windows 7 machine. And the rest of this demo is very simple. I will demo how the fake antivirus program displays itself under Windows 7 and also Vista. Since uh, it's very straightforward and I've done enough talking, I will stop narrating here. For more information, please visit our blog at blog.omrise.com. Thank you.